All right, we just saved over the, well, slot 10, we just finished the investigation segment, and we're now going into the trial for episode one, or for episode, well, rather, for episode four, the first part of the trial. I'm hoping this doesn't take much longer. February 20th at 9.23am, the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I never expected this. Who'd have thought... Who'd have thought we'd be back here again so soon? We are on a stage tour of Great Britain with the intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. Oh well, yes, I suppose that's true, but for the person on the dock, it may as well be his or her one and only time in court, and it could be life-changing. In which case, treating it as a research may seem a little crass. We should still have... yeah, we still have the two pieces of evidence. Oh, when you put it like that, you're quite right. Hang on, can I look at, can I like rotate this at all? Uh, I cannot. <coughs> oh. Mr. Natsuna, good morning. Why are his eyes bloodshot? <coughs> oh dear, are you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. The only bird catching the worms, they, they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression. I really don't want to catch a worm. I tried so desperately to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't get to wing. And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do all literary, literary people take things so literally? Thank you for putting your faith in us today, Mr. Natsume. I, I wish I had nine lives. My old future ends in the battle time. Too terrified to tremble. Really? Because I can feel tremors in the floor. I can't do this, I can't take it! Hello, welcome to Mr. Naruhoda, Esquire. Um, yes? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looks like the opening night of the opera. There were so many people. I had no idea when my case was such a notorious affair here in London. Oh, um, neither did I. Do you know why that might be, Mr. Sato? I'm sorry, Mr. Naru. But I have no idea. So I know all look on your face is just coincidence then? Don't let the truth from me! It's 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 because of the Reaper, isn't it? What if Zeke's? Is is that right, Mr. Sato? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning, and yes. What if Zeke's is on the front page of every one? Knew it. Sometime after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now, in fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gresden told us something similar, didn't he? As did, um, McGill did. Magnus McGill did. I also date months ago, Mott, the Lord's of Menzies has returned to the courtroom and a very long hiatus. The trial back is good. What a harrowing experience that was. I believe that experience. Uh, that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. But we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the reader back in the Bailey so soon for what appears to be a mundane murder? That's the question the papers are asking, and they're all speculating various answers. 
Mundane! Mundane is the most significant suck up the century to some of us. Uh, so Seki, I know this is hard for you to believe, but I'm not talking about your specific, your case, right? In, in the headline. Oh dear, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing him. Well, lest we forget that it could spot a kind of international incident. Obviously, the regrets of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. There's another blatant similarity with the trial two days ago. Yes, I agree. Look at Mr. Naruto Esquire. It's you! Me? Well, I suppose that's true. Both times, it's you who stands against this legendary prosecutor. It can only mean that you're friends with the Reaper! Uh, acquaintances, I guess. We haven't actually gone out for afternoon tea or dined at a restaurant together. We might have been at the same restaurant at the same time, but those, that could have been the coincidence. Please, I don't have shoulders with, with Deathbringers. I'm afraid there's really only one other explanation. It can only be another example, Mr. Norohodo, of your uncommon bad luck. Thanks for that. Oh, this is just my luck. Why must I be represented by a man with such frail fortune? I'm the least lucky lawyer alive! Hey, you're the one that wanted me to represent you. Also, I won the the case against the last case. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in Chapter 4. Well, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsumi, who asked me to represent you. Yes, it's true that I'm just a student new to London with little in the way of experience or skills or luck. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end. So point to the so point to whichever corner is yours, and I will punch it until I until I die. Um, and I believe in you, Mr. Natsume. A benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruhodo, uh, Esquire. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Open up on non local assistant, Miss Mikodalba uh, Esquires. I am in your debt forever. I shall. Mr. Natsume. I shall never forget this great kindness as long as I live. Mr. Natsume, counsel for the defense. Court is in se uh, session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. All right, Mr. Natsume. Oh, all right, Mr. Natsume. Then, Mr. Natsume, it's time. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yes. Also, stop making fun of my voice. This is it. My second appearance in a British courtroom. My second trial against the Reaper. I hope you're watching over me, Cousin Moon. That was this time I won't let my faith waver. I'll believe in my client to the last. Just like you believed in me. I mean, as long as the client doesn't fucking tamper with evidence in the middle of the trial, I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. February 20th, 10 a.m. in the Old Bay Courtroom. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I declare this court to be in session. I now call all upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. The Nipponese are truly a fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Old Strongheart has told me all about you. You are a student who arrived in London two days ago. I mean, I have you. Do you have a point? 
hoping to be a patriot and feel uncompelled to try to help make cures, I suppose. Typical Japanese arrogance. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropriate description. Sasato's. After all, our, after our previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. Very, very questionably, I might... Um, Fascinating of dark trial it was, too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Here's to the acquitted and his unfortunate violent end. Thank you, counsel. I see both sides are in a fine fettle. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members to the public? I really hope that these are different jury members. And also that, that they are procedurally generated. It, like, that, like oh, when the day rolls over. This guy again? You never, you never know. You never know when you might be down on your luck. But I believe it have been fair play for everyone. Well, I must warn you, I'm rather ruthless, but I'm more ruthless than I appear. Oh, well, not me. It, what you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fellow. I'm afraid to say I think it's quite possible that Mustache, the old foreigner, did the deed. Come on, what are we waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Eh, sorry. Make go and catch that. Huh? Well, let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please. What one seeks? Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with the rising power in the East. Far East. The cursed, the accused in the dark of today's student from that same land. A certain Mr. Soseki Natsume. And while our, our country has extended its into this foreign student with the warmest of welcomes, Regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, the student is accused of the most sinister act. Plunging a knife in the back of an innocent woman who was doing nothing but walking down the street. I'm not crime! Let me t I tell you from bitter and spirit. And those are the worst. Bloody oak they are! Just look at that sharp, sour complexion and short stature. He's, he's one of those dreadful Japanese! Come on, let's get those over. With me now, everyone. One, two, three. Objection. Eh, sorry. Didn't quite catch that. <laughs> Objection. The trial hasn't even begun. Pray forgive me the discourtesy of smashing my hallowed chalice here in this great chamber. How many of those do you, How many hallowed chalices do you have? We broke like six of them yesterday. Well... The day before yesterday. Allow me to call my first witness to the stand. Very well. Bailiff, lead the inspector in, please. <clears throat> Your name and occupation, please. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson. I'm Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events hmm. of the case for the court, Inspector? The victim was thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Green. I beg your pardon, Inspector? Thought to be? Yes, having been stabbed in the back by attackers night, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now, and she's been comatose ever since. What? So you don't even know who she he is, for sure. Hmm, comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger. Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate on the details, Inspector. Sir, am I gonna ask everyone to look at the street map? 
As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago, around five in the afternoon. Ah, it happened on the pavement. Running along front. And you know what? I'll go with the other voice. It happened on the pavement, running along inside Briar Road. Hold it. A white door for, for, for horse drawn vehicles. It had not been long since snow stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, was walking down the street. Oh, well, she was just a person behind by the accused and stared at the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared and she's currently being treated in one of the city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, I'm not able to take a statement from her cause. This is the case file with everything we know about the victim so far. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence if you please. Uh, found with knife in her back, currently in hospital, yet drinking consciousness. What is the weapon that was used? Tall green female, stout build, early 20s. Location payment, Friar Road, East Side, Rolly Beat. The remains unconscious. Name was gleaned from personal effects. Other details unknown. Apart from single stab wound from large knife, no other signs of injury observed. Assailant was seen running away by the reporting officer and successfully arrested the following day. Why wouldn't the, the reporting officer have pursued the assailant? Sorry, I have that here. It was a roll from the victim's back. Ouch. That big thing's starting to make me scared to walk down the street now. With a heavy blade like that, almost anyone would have been able to stab the poor woman. It's ragged looking Soseki san, I suppose. Hmm. Common or Gordon Jackknife, I would say. Rather nondescript. Thank you, Inspector. Court accepts the blade as evidence. Large but common was folding knife. It was found lodged in the victim's bag. Now then, what do we know of motive? Money or valuables, I presume? Oops. the blade appears to be missing. You're right. Well spotted, Mr. Sato. I wonder what could have happened to it. Yes. You don't think you'd still be lost in the victim, do you? Oh dear, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. From what I can tell what from what we can tell looking at the woman's possessions, it's Seems like she's a poor student herself. I have to imagine she would have anything much worth pinching the law. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep seated resentment toward the victim? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from those insane kid named Bookshots, the defendant assuming doesn't appear to get out much. This moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the. Yes! Grievance and ruled out as the motive. What reason could Mr. Natsumi possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Yet you arrested the man in spite of that, in a totally unjustified and handy to handed way. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncorked bottle into the public gallery, but your words have soured its hallowed bouquet. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here. What? Scott 
Grimyard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Inspector Grayson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Gregson. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest the Nipponese student. Yes, sir! Start two minutes of rest. As I said, it was five o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. The visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one uh, else but about but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he just bought, he was on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, we found the bloke to arrest him. Old books, you say? Yes, my lord. I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime taken immediately after or the incident. Ah, uh, yes, I can clearly see the books to which you were referring. I will take that photographic print as evidence, please, Inspector. But the defendant is not just denying everything, as you put it. Why are you doing this, Sasato? Do go on. Mr. Natsumi has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruto? Now that you mention it, when we visited him in prison yesterday, he did tell us what all had happened. As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. As a woman wearing a green overcoat, she was, and just when I went to over, as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and, and collapsed on the cold hard slabs of stone at my feet. I was terrified. I had to get away from there, so I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, and me back to my cursed lodgings. Her, a green overcoat. Well that's, well, that's exactly what the woman in the print is wearing. Why are these two allowed to be jurors? Oh my, a photographic print in full color. What will the world come up with next? The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. Also, I want to look at this picture again. Does it look at... The position that she fell in. That's really bizarre. <laughs> that does not mean he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time. Just the two of them. The victim and the accused. In other words, there was nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. That the accused concedes. Ugh. Hmm. Seems this cross examination could prove pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. And Jesus cross examination turned the tables here. It's our only chance. Hmm. 
5 o'clock in the afternoon. There's an occurrence that was unusually like fog. The smell was good, and the victim, no one but the victim was accused. And the victim was stabbed from behind as his foot was collapsed on the pavement. He just ran off. Foot was almost my home from the foot shop. The defendant apparently visited a secondhand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. I, I shall follow the holding less literature. I'm going back to the guard tape, me voice, because I don't remember the other one. I commend the accused over what the subject matter of his scholarly attention. The vaults are almost stacked from the you know, window from the floor to ceiling with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please, Inspector? Oh, well, if I must. I have to ask you to look at the map again, I'm afraid. Of course, a secondhand uh, bookshop to the accused lodgings is this place here, Urban Books. Little place on the corner of Briar Road and Mere Street. Here on the street. As it happens, the accused is currently living in Baji, and on the other side of the Briar Road at the opposite end. Which means it doesn't get genius to work out the way you want to talk home. Can home. Something like this. Oh, I need to press everything here to get local map updates. Yes, I concur with the conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have past the scene of the crime on his way home from that particular shop. Mr. Amarano, I think the inspector told us it could turn out to be of vital importance. Yes, I agree. The most important point for the inspector may just be Bookshaw's name. Inspector Gredson, may I ask a favor? What? Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony, please? I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe? Oh, well, you know, I mean, yes. It could be a very important clue. Very well. Not that I can see it being any great significance. But please revise your testimony accordingly, Inspector. Yes, sir, my lord. Whatever you say. Could this man be any more sardonic? <laughs> so I'm way home from Bourbon. A second hand put shop you apparently <coughs> Alright, I'm gonna press everything. We know what the objection is. It's the wrong bookshop. A light fog, you say. Well, light for London. You could see the opposite side of the street for once, not much further. That's light, is it? Around well, these parts, yes. Not something I'd expect a Japanese fellow like yourself to know, of course. I've heard that London is famous for its fog, but in my country, people usually imagine that it gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. It's how oh, quaint. Yeah, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize as you can appreciate and expect. I see. At this time, you know, the fog causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed. The other day, I was very nearly trampled by horses before I could see the carriage standing. No, it was a Sato, and I should definitely remember to stop, look, and listen. However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. A fact no doubt lamented by the accused. <laughs> Hold it. How are you able to say that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend. Because that is what the witnesses to this crime have told us. Ah, yes, Inspector Gretzen mentioned the witnesses yesterday, didn't he? That's right! One of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That is correct, ma'am. Then we must hear their testimony. Prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary. But wait a minute. At five o'clock in the afternoon, in the, middle, in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. 
No matter how light the fog might have been, no one could have seen. I'm unaware of the situation on the tiny island of the east. Here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated by night and the night by gas street lights. Ah! The prosecution believes there would have been ample light to, by which to witness the crime. Quite. Here in London, the, for the first time in history, mankind has completely conquered the darkness. Which means we really need to hear those witness statements. If I can just get through the fog of this cross-examination, maybe we'll be able to. It seems the Council for the Defense is taking the stock. Continue with the testimony, Inspector. Blue victims stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the Hold it! From behind, you say? That's right, as you can see from this print. <coughs> yeah, it's quite so inspector. We handled the weapons clearly protruding from the victim's back. And you said this poor woman, this green, remains in a critical condition, comatose no less? I'm afraid so, my lord, yes. She's being treated with pies. I was hopeful she'd come around before the trial started so I could take a statement, but wasn't to be. Nice. Yes, that is indeed a pity. It would have been most illuminating to hear the victim's own account of this. Luck is on your client's side, it seems. <laughs> on the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky. Your awesome tone is seriously undermined by those disturbingly wide eyes, I'm afraid. Can my audio stop breaking then fixing itself within like a set as soon as I alt tab? Oh no. Hold it! Is that some of these belongings? Um I think I'll find some down in the photographic print of the crime scene. The lead books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Second hand books that were irreparably damaged and fallen in the snow, of course. The accused could have easily carried all three books in one hand, which means that his other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Er, Natsume had his hands full with his books. He's managed to close the one avenue of escape we might have had before we even knew it, knew it was there. I need to say that the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust the knife into the woman's back? That must be what happened, my lord. Yes. Hold it! Hmm. So there's a shop called Bourbon... The shop is called Bourbon Books, is it? That's right, that's the closest we have a second-hand bookshop to the Hughes Lodgings. To get the, uh, from there back to his room. Okay, he, he took me with that. I had to do going right past the very spot where the incident took place. If I can just confirm one point, can we be sure that the defendant really did visit Bourbon Books on the day in question? Well, we haven't actually confirmed it, no. You haven't confirmed it? Why the devil not, Inspector? Well, um, the thing is, the shopkeeper's gone on a trip, you see, left the morning after the incident to collect more stock, I'm told. So we um, haven't been able to ask the bloke if we accused and visited his shop on the day in question or not. Well, in that case, what did the defendant himself have to say about it? No recollection. What? According to the statement he made at the time, the accused had no recollection of where he'd been. Of course he doesn't. The boat clearly has his head in the clouds whenever he's walking about town. He claims he just wanders into whatever bookshop he happens to be has and, and rarely notices the name. Hmm. I should say the man ought to learn to look where he's going at the very least. 
So, it's just as I thought then. Is something the matter? Inspector, you may continue with your testimony. A matter of working out with those belong to, we found Hold it! arresting them. Yes, for the help of the famous detective Herlock Sholmes to look at the defendant, I believe. Stuff and nonsense. Sorry? That jack in office, that busy bossy, just comes and sticks his oar, and whether we ask him or not. Oh, but according to what I have here, Mr. Sholmes was shown it to the scene by Scotland Yard detectives. Well, that was nothing to do with me. The lads at the scene must have done it without my permission. Uh, I tell them time and again, whenever something happens, send word to headquarters. Then they fo then follow your blooming instructions. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm choking on spit. I see. If that never gets his hands on any details, we'll all be reading it in Ranced Magazine next month. You can bet your last farthing that I'll be in there too, stripped of all my hard work on the case. Yes, Mr. Sholmes, no, Mr. Sholmes, aren't you clever, Mr. Sholmes? That's all the thanks I'll be getting. Inspector, the dumb hand is proving detrimental to the arts activities. Perhaps I should step in and deal with him. Ah! Inspector Grayson is lost for words. Yes, the Reaper's words carry a lot of weight, obviously. Anyway, the point is this. The little, that little Japanese bloke's already in there. He's admitted that the loose books all over the pavement at the scene were the ones he bought that day. Hmm. What do you think, Mr. Renato? I don't know to serve the jury during this cross-examination, I'm afraid. As soon as fate will be sealed, yes, I'm sure to find him guilty. So one way or the other, I have to expose an undeniable inconsistency in the inspector's testimony. And here's the inconsistency. Uh, name of bookshop. He was on his way from from, from not bourbon Hold books. It. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Oh my gosh, I press. Uh, they changed the button, so I press. I I I pressed. R to present, because I forgot it's E, then R. <laughs> Holy crap, this is the longest fucking thing to go over to. <laughs> okay, continue with testimony. Okay. And then secondhand bookstore receipt from your books. Objection. Um, if, if I could just stop you there, Inspector Gregson. What is it, Sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsume's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three secondhand books. You found that in the accused's room, did you? Yes, but the point is not where the receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. The receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Y-O-R-E, I presume. Yes, my lord. Uh, so Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books at a second-hand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh, what? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Eh, yes, sir. Your books is another second-hand bookshop not far from Bourbon Books. It's just that... Oh, it's such a small place. I didn't think the accused would have known of it. Objection! But in fact, that is the bookshop in which the defendant visited on the day in question. This receipt proves it. Objection! Yes, for what difference it makes. Wherever the, the man, wherever the man purchased his musty tones, it makes no difference in the final Objection. analysis. I disagree. I mean, after all, I'll, 
I have the street map here, if that might be of help. Oh, um, yes, thank you. Have a look at this, please. But the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books. Yes, he would have almost certainly passed the same place where Miss Green was attacked. However, if we're taking into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books, it may very well turn out that he wasn't to pass that location at all. <gasps> Could that be true? My, my. I'd not have to on where this other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? Absolutely. You can absolutely be right. Inspector Gregson, where is this your books establishment? Um, obviously we looked into that. Well, turns out that your books is... Just here on the next corner of... Um, um, here's Child Street. And there you have it. As you can clearly see now... What, are we gonna say he took this path instead of... That path? Or maybe he went using these back paths? Same training to be a clown the way he regales us with such witticisms to your future career in the circus. <laughs> you put that class down now, or I'll put it down for you. I um, don't think I needed to spell it out here, but oh, but here we go. <laughs> the kids are coming home from your bus instead of bourbon books. There's no doubt he still would have passed the same. In the place where the victim was stabbed. Yes, thank you, Inspector. Uh, allow me to reiterate for my learned, if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. Wherever the man purchased his musty tones, it makes no difference in the final analysis. Ah! As I suspected, you can't fool me. I don't. I don't suggest you try. It is the same lady. What do I say, eh? I've had enough of this now. Hey, in your body. So I'm sorry, but I'm not your feet in that. Mr. Tyler, hold on. You mustn't give up. What? What do you mean? If the prosecution's answer is correct, the members of the jury may very well decide that Mr. Natsume is guilty. Ah, she's absolutely right. It must be. I must consider the question just put forward by the prosecution very carefully. I think he must have passed the location on his way home from your books. But, I mean... Can I view the... If he took this road instead it's not you know listed then he would not have passed that road that I can uh, we'll risk it the assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed explain yourself counsel um yes my lord you can see what I mean on this map. When returning from your book to his lodgings, I should assume he could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. 
he arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection! Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that route is, is what is commonly referred to as the long way around. Ah. On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Well, um, uh, the answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words, he's not, he's, he only arrived in, hold on, hold on a second. Oh, I don't get more information. I don't get more information by hovering over him. <laughs> I was gonna say, he only arrived in the area like a week ago, so he may not- so he probably doesn't know that. The accused took the obvious back to his lodgings and is the obvious part of his crime. But, but, but- Aha, yes, I got it! Obviously, we must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. I have already informed the court that the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Huh. <laughs> that's right, as I said, the bloke seems... That's right, as I said, the bloke seems to spend his time wandering aimlessly from A to B. That day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which road he took home. I don't... I don't believe this! I thank you, my learned friend, and suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you, insightful jurors? But, but even if that is the case, the defense still... I agree with Lord Lanzis. Wholeheartedly in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does, does this mean... Three members of the jury are completely convinced now, and are also racist, apparently. Because that's a big thing in this game. Very well, I hereby... Uh, in that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty! Guilty. 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 What? Did I just l instantly lose? Okay, that was... Hold on, what? It appears the jury's leaning is unanimous. <laughs> we had to do the pit them against each other thing again, right? To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Mr. Naruhado. No, not yet. This isn't over yet. So I have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I had to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I had to turn this around. Somehow. <clears throat> those are the eyes of poor and not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again this trial. The rights of the defense were written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated, uh, antiquated if you will, but it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese with a snapper and his bonkers refusal to throw in his alley. Very, very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. 
you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. <laughs> uh, judicial findings. Jurors' contentions. I mean, these two are, are just biased against us to begin with. This lady might also be biased against us. For pity's sake, that little nibbin is on me. It's already a minute himself, didn't he? Peace and the woman in the green clots before his eyes. Why, he could have only been the victim. The victim. The man would have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. Not in winter. So the poor woman was attacked from behind. What's how dreadful. I really don't care. Can we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Your books, yes, I shot that. Your books. Oh, not with the reason. Only minor exceptions. The reason for finding the guilty, the defendant guilty, are all too clear. When the stabbing that occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge up here is convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Why did he have to run away like that? And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I make a case for the defense? <laughs> Mr. Malahodo, this is no time for crumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue... Yes, I know. I have to turn the tide. I must try to make the jurors change their minds. All four of them, at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to forward forward. Also, why did the prosecution only have to change three? Such fucking bullshit. Advantage. There. Um, you, you have the floor, counsel. Begin your summation examination. Yes, my lord. I just need to keep the straw going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryonosuke. You can do it. Jury examination. <laughs> the defense's rebuttal. <coughs> he admitted it himself. Class before eyes might only have been the victim. Okay, so you say she collapsed, you say she was a- but you say she was attacked. Hold it! You're right that at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to have seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Not quite, that's precisely my point. Certainly that someone wearing green was the defendant, was the victim. It's clear that the funny little Nipponese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. Let's not forget, man. The beam defendant vehemently denies attacking them. Why, of course he does. If he admits to stabbing her, his life is over. And obviously he'll never face coward honestly and then he simply collapse before his eyes. But if that's a lie as you're suggesting, do you think he would not have even gotten something more credible? Oh, I couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who's to say what goes through your funny little minds? I could tell you what's going on my, through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. I do declare the man has already made the admission. It's often stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could have possibly this awful crime. And if no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well for her. Hold it! 
Okay, what's the matter, you man? You're the wife of Mr. Garadev, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume is her. The master's wife? Where did you get your idea, sir? And the maid, the maid, you understand? She's keeping up that charade. Ugh. This is going to be awkward. Uh, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you've been selected for jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you mean. It was on the letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Miss Internatsume, the defendant, takes logic in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been in a little over a week now. And at that time, surely he must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit such a crime as this? Oh my goodness me, yes, he's just the salt! What? Spending all his time in that dark, dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous mustache. The man never speaks of the starting those shifty eyes. All the neighbors talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think that they must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh dear, poor Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm, nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... Okay, bookworm is different than worm. I better be careful that it lends me to speak. She's set up damning things already. Hold it! We can't deny that there are other routes that Mr. Matsume could have taken back from your books. Oh, yes, like the one you drew on the map, you mean. What was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether that little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Oh, well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there's no proof that shows he did, is there? Oh, yes, that's true as well. So I understand that the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. <laughs> that was all this true. So the only thing that makes sense is they went home along Briar Road. Ugh, I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given a lot of thought, you know, I, I, I didn't just make up my mind on a whim for that he did it. I mean, if there's, there's some logical reason why he might have gone Calabash, the Calabash Road, well, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. The reason why Sasuke son might have taken the longer way home. Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'd be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. All right, you. What are you so busy for? Hold it! A man's life is on the line here, sir. And this will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too, and so is my family's. Ah. Uh, Lots of you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat, and neither do the wife and kids. Yeah, I see. That must be very hard. I get to the union every morning when I don't need to do If you're late to work, and the work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supplied by this person left, right, and center. They have to cheap later to get the roads dug up to fix it. So it's a hard slog from dawn until dusk it is. So, you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just around the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. What? Another coincidence? That's right. Mirsham Street it was. Mirsham Street. Oh, the map, Mr. Naruto. There are only three named streets. Junior number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point of that? Can't we get the, let's get this business over the run? Please, sir. It's important. Uh, fine, I'm doing it. All right, we got one. Digging up mirror str So we're pitting you. 
against you. Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. At odds, Council? Explain yourself. Please, don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Uh, what? I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, juror number three? Oh, me, sir? What do you mean? Juror number five's words now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on the map of our local er the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited your this bookshop to purchase a number of second-hand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on Mearsham Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant's route home could not have taken them along Mearsham Street and down Briar Road. Oh, yes, of course! Wait, what, what do you think, sir? Well, yeah, you can't argue with that, really, can you? You must have had a good two yards on board the statement up. Never a gentleman and a gentleman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. <coughs> yes, I suppose he must have. I suppose that must be right, eh? Turn number three. You said the following. The man wouldn't have gone the, around the houses on his way back home from the bookshop, but we see now that he had no choice. Yes! My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may? Yes? I, I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. That honestly should turn everyone else around because they were like, Ooh, there's no reason he should have... There was no reason for him to to go the long way around. And now we have established reason for going the long way around. What about you, sir? Who, <laughs> oh, me? Mm, well, all right then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument that should be filled in. That's what I say. Oh, well done, Mr. Miller. Well done. That was wonderful. Wow, we managed to change a couple of minds at least. It strengthened our position somewhat. Yes, and we'll the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are really right or not. Now, if only we could just identify one more clear discrepancy that would make them start doubting Mr. Natsume. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yeah, that's what we've got to do. Bad ceases if you bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent. By whatever means we have at our disposal. Thank you, Counsel. On with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Let's examine this guy soon. Er, sorry, hold it, you say? Hold what? Um, no, no, I, what I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, did you, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. What time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was packing out, you know, books in there all afternoon. It would have been just before five that I left. It's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you see. It's actually when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Let's make no mistake there, I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry, not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? While I was walking down Calabash Road, I slipped on the ice and docked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. I let myself clean out, I did. 
I thought my, I thought my mental was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? That's right. I live in Cornpipe, you see. I think on Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your book. Turn number six, I must insist. If you add that information to your formal statement, it may very well be extremely significant. Huh? Sorry. Extremely sick? No, no, I'm quite all right now. <coughs> Change two minds, two more to go. Let myself clean out. Uh, let's press this guy as well. Um, excuse me, but aren't you? Yes, that's right. I was a witness at and the witness down myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling under your face. What side of it, anyway? If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London. <laughs> to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me in the, the, me the other day. You had me and that young head of pegged as criminals. Oh, no. Water under the bridge. Now there's all sorts of rumors passing around, and the police have been badgering me non-stop. If, if I could turn back the clock... Well, anyway, I don't know about the Hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. I'm free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Oh, thank goodness. Alright, maybe I struggle to change this man. It's mine a little, given our upper history. Oh dear, do you becoming a Mr. First now? Okay, so... You said the woman in green collapsed. But... He slipped himself. And he's in green. Let's try it! Those two statements show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. Flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two? Juror number six? My, whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. There's at least one fact of which we can be sure of here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are all aware of this. The poor young woman was, was stabbed. Objection! Can we really be sure of that? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six's account of what happened to him that day. Well, that same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my! <gasps> My goodness, you mean... <coughs> That's right, I'm referring to, of course. The hard of hearing juror number... To jar... Hard of hearing juror number six. Are you really suggesting... That person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes? Was the jolly old gentleman at the end of the bench here with me today? That's entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Oh, look at that! 
Oh my goodness me! I'm sorry, you need a pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person whom this Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, which we've already established, and if that's true, then clearly, the crime on the scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not his way home. Oh my! You idiot old man, if you hadn't been so dead as to be rolling him out there, we would have bought this off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the old man who the street says, hmm? Huh? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat? Is it? Well, I don't hope it won't cause any convenience, but... Would you like to change your leaning, I presume? I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime to change your mind, is it? Whoa! Next time we see Tets, though, could have checked that. Oh yeah, that's busted audio. Well, the summation examination has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The I is two, the nose four. So the nose have it, not guilty, they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Objection! <laughs> Could it be some churlish need to drink from my hallowed chalice moments after we sing an objection? Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. What man seeks? It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Eh? <gasps> Whatever do you mean? Objection! I never tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed, stalwart so juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road as he claimed. I do believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had excavated the sea. That's right, it took me the whole day and they paid me immediately tuppence for it. Now my learned enemies friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of how the distance that two yards represents? Ah, oh, um, well... I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, the distance readily vaulted by anyone a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh, me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? Did you perchance or a sign to prevent pedestrians pa passing the site of your works? Eh? I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches would have had over passing anyway, and we just turned heard any gentle vote back when they came. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. Oh! But he's a super nerdy bookworm, dude. What? I 
That's not true, is it? The incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. And that Sunei walked down Briar Road. Ugh, crushed in a single sentence. And old man. Cold man, you can talk. You said that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, I um, can't say as I remember. You, you don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You see, it was this old man that the accused saw. Why would they thousand to one? I can see being able to prove it. Arrgh! Order! Order! Lord Van Six, explain yourself. My lord. If you had such a trenchant argument on your sleeve, my well, lord, did you not prefer it during the summation examination? <laughs> I wanted to give this young pawn student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. Also, we recovered this last trial that the prosecution is, is not allowed to interfere with the summation examination. I want him to see for himself just how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Ugh. But my hospitality has its limits and they have been reached, I feel. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What? What are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call in its nets witnesses to the stand. Granted, bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. It's nets witnesses? Mr. Narado, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Alright, no matter who Van Zekus brings to the stand as his witness, no matter what they ha- and no matter what they say, I believe in Soseki-san. I know he's innocent, and I'll keep believing to the very end, until this battle is over! Ah, so no chat point, huh? Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Constable Roy Roly B, sir. Nothing to report on the streets, sir. I'm Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to. I am this t young town hero's wife. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. And we celebrated the first anniversary only the other day. No, no, was it your husband? It was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. How oh, this surprising. Being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beach is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I heard that before, actually. Apart from rare days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day. They patrol boarding courses and pub houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check the meters that are reading true. That meters are reading true. And they're responsible for keeping the streets clean, lighting and distinguishing our sh and lighting and sh distinguishing our street lights. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like police duties at all. I wouldn't be surprised if you just long to sleep on my feet. I didn't collapse long ago. It goes without saying that the policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off-duty, constables expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. is a man of honor. Hey, 
end of hand of slumber on the day in question. This man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction, and they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir. Isn't it Rolly? Also, we're only beat, sir. Not a dog born on the streets, sir. What a great kind of witness. What a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw on the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. Witnesses saw. It was our wedding anniversary, and Rolly was taking me on her needle. There was no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog in the, on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor, the other in its cards and then falling off. We ran straight over, of course, and looked out for nearby police spots. It was definitely the Japanese man on the top. Molly and I both saw him clear as day, but you just said they were silhouettes! Well, this is absolute shit testimony, I must say. <gasps> Out here, this policeman knows why they're going to positively identify Mr. Natsume at the scene. If their testimony is true. The alternative course of events that you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death nail in fact. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate thing chance and on your wedding anniversary too. Oh I know, but I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Gosh, the light of a London Bobby sounds hard indeed. Indeed, however, this cross examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? Friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying under oath that it was without a doubt the accused, Mr. Natsume Sasaki. And one of your, these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So if you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. <laughs> Except the man's so tired his wife has to do all the talking. Enough preamble. Counsel for the defense, commence the cross-examination, please. Y yes my lord. Silhouettes? That's right. They were coming toward us and walking the prior road in the opposite direction. Oh, it's one of these ones where we had to. It's a rather pop figure followed by a scrawny, thin looking man. <coughs> but that's someone that's after off the victim picture in this print, and like Mr. Natsume. Yes, unfortunately it does. I do certain that at the time there was nobody else nearby. Yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there were streets on lights on prior road, you see. There's nobody else around at all, isn't that right, my darling? Mm -hmm. oh, yes, that's right. Of course. There's a light fog on the ground. The prior road is dead straight and you can see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there's street lighting as well. I didn't see any other. Yes, yes. Before sleep takes a fire, but will you answer, please, Mr. Beat? Are you quite sure of what you've just said? Yes, sir. A cop I spend this whole day every day keeping watch on the streets. I swear to it, sir. As I'm sure as, as my love for Patricia is true. Oh, but. Oh, Rolly. 
on my team, there's no one around other than the victim of the attacker. Swimson thought that, that, that must be how it really happened. It's being the scene that there's no one around. Oh, well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? It put the scene off convincingly. Thank you, I believe you have a reasonable clear idea of the situation just before the incident. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? Let's press this one. Hold it! This cause. Trying to change it to work, you say? Are you also a member of the police for speed? Self and this stuff is shopping in men only. Women and children really can't even apply. Can't even apply. I think you can see why children and elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think all well, that's ever so handsome and it's new about it sits you down. It sits you down on the ground, doesn't it, darling? Mm, well, uh, I just finished my beat. Fred and I were heading back to the station. I'm just so glad we're getting changed there. Is, is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh no, I much prefer you in uniform. It's because I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear, that doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You were going for a meal after you had finished your beat for the day, correct? That's right, sir. Yes. I thought I was fit to drop, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. Well, this is my life, sir. As, as long as I'm the proud owner of this, I'll send my city. Metropolitan Police Warrant Card. I'll send my queen to the end. My city and my queen to the end. What's that now? No more cards, sir. Proof that I'm not malent and copper. Most of the level found doing the customs of the force written on it as a reminder after all of us policemen are our sworn duty. Charles is just a London town and uphold the peace of the common man. Sir, I'm from such a noble cause I've covered 20 miles and almost every single day without fail and without grumble. What does I know? There's a plot in my boots as all Londoners need to hear to feel secu even secure. So finding crime doesn't appear to come into it, do it then. It's odd. Just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat puts up with a lot to be married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Well, Pat. What a charming couple! They would love such a joy to be home. At a little over the top, perhaps. And then, kind of describe what happened next. Hold it! <laughs> Scattered something? What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. Then when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Huh? Um, well, uh, yes, that's right. With some old books. And I see. Old books. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a company dropped a number of them. All around where the victim lay on the pavement. You just clearly pictured in this photographic print. The rotten Japanese man did that when he did the it! Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him. It was the man in the dock without question, sir. The mustache, hunched back, cat like eyes, the taunt mouth, the snub nose. Everything! Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right, he looked down at that poor defenseless woman with those terrifying, intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his foot on the pavement and ran away. I... I see. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling me the truth here. I have in mind the court that this unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now please continue. Yes! Uh. 
for help with the nearby police spots. Hold it! Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no, I didn't. I may not be a police officer myself, but I'm the proud wife of one after all. Is that right, my darling? Uh, yes, that's right. I asked Miss Beat to go. I was off duty by that point. But Bob is never truly off duty, of course, so I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the scene of a crime is a task of considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police bots. Um, forgive my ignorance. What do you mean exactly by the right police spots? Depending on, on a crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Well, the homeless staff wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia the way to the police spots were beat at the, the, the incident fell under, so she could go and report it. I wonder if the police are cutting us for help from the Bobby on duty. There's nothing more potent than a young couple in love looking together, you know. I had so swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The absence of two model citizens. Oh, please, you're making us blush. It's tea, darling. <laughs> yes, sir, what Patricia said, sir. Let's move on, shall we? We may not have to present anything here. <laughs> Hold it! <laughs> but surely you would have been able to have been able to see his face by the light of the gas street lamps, would you? We absolutely could lots of tenders have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know. Alright. The light from the street lamps was more than enough. My husband already told you the fog was late, didn't he? Uh, yes. And um, what of the fog? A famous fort across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those who are to live with it, of course. Oh, it is, Jays. It's like you can't even see the hand under the end of your own arm. Yes, alright, I take your point. Now, could you stop shaking your husband about? Because it all makes your eyes sharp, you see. That's all we can tell you for certain that it was that little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? Hmm? Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. I was the accused, and no mistake. I was sash, the hunchback, the cat like us, the top mouth, the stuff. No, it's unmistakable. Sa! As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. This is the son that saw running away from the scene of the crime. <laughs> yes, that's... It, is it? That's their entire testimony? What do you think, Mr. Marahoto? I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does... ...is that Mr. and Mrs. Beat saw what... Uh, what they say they saw. I feel the same. So that's the truth. Where does it leave us? Members of the jury are sure to call for a guilty verdict after this testimony. Oh no! Then what do we do? We've got some of over here. What are you trying to say? I think you'll try to find a contradiction somewhere else within their testimony. What do you mean somewhere else? But their statements about seeing Mr. Atsume on is unequivocal. Calling that into question won't help. But if you can identify some other part of their testimony that appears to contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them to make the jury doubt if the first memory is accurate. All right. Yeah, like where he says there's they were silhouettes, and then they're like, oh yeah, we absolutely. Books on finding up the script is somewhere in the testimony. I'm afraid I don't. So do I have to present here? Mr. Fire, sir, can I ask you something? 
Oh, um, yes, of course. What is it? Oh, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony, is that right? Is it? Well, out with it! What? Oh, no, no, it's... Oh, no, oh, no, it's really not all that at all. I was as a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail, everything, like, like... Oh, hang on, what about the book someone dropped? I can tell you every single one, I can every single one. And you dare to question why I'm a reliable my testimony is? That will do, Miss Beat. No, it won't it'll do at all. The Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute of the really will. I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please, put your husband's fists down. P perhaps you would like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Miss Beat. Mrs. Beat, might that appease you? Oh, thank you, Lord. That would settle things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? Of the four. Ah! One, two, three. You know what? Let's do it. Hold on. There. Objection. So, you're saying that there were four books? That's right. I remember all of them. The picture one see somebody, what's it yearns, I'm here for someone, and the thing I mean is something. I'm sorry, Miss Beat. Not only are those titles incorrect, but there's a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no, oh no. Wait, what flaw? Simply that at the scene of the crime. There were only three books, not four. What? Have a good look at this photographic print of the scene of the crime. As you can clearly see, there are only three books. But, but no, no, that can't be. I saw them. I know what it is. So you can't fool me. Sorry? It's a beautiful on a dead body. Maybe some larger corpse is blocking the view of the fourth book, that's all. Let's at least try to remember that the poor woman isn't dead. At least, uh, even if we're insulting her size. No, I'm sorry, Miss B. But Miss Natsume, Miss Natsume could not have possibly dropped the four books you described. Because the, because he only, uh, because the, his receipt shows three books. From your suit, tell me something you can readily substantiate with evidence, I presume? Yeah, I got it right here. I showed it earlier. Ah, evidence. Counsel, you will present evidence to substantiate your claim or withdraw it. What proof do you have that the accused did not drop four books? It doesn't even give the option to withdraw it. <laughs> They're like, hey, if you don't remember this, that's on you. The evidence is right here, in the form of this bookshop receipt. From your books? Yes, this receipt details in the Mr. Natsume's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. No! Therefore, Mr. Natsume would have only dropped three books at the scene. Which means that your powers of observation, madam, cannot be replied upon. <laughs> so it cannot be denied that though you say it was the defendant you saw, you could very well be mistaken. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! Objection!
It's plainly evident that it is your powers of deduction that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nipp Nipponese friend. What? What cannot be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from the scene. A fact that you know very well you have no hope of disproving. Ah! <coughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, I'm quite parched. So you've striven to avert attention from that by dint of some inconsequential discrepancies. Will that be fair? Uh, he sees right through me. But your plan has somewhat recoiled against you. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain with a toast. To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony in every respect. Oh? You see, the matter is not up for debate. At the scene of Briar Road, a total of four books were most definitely found. Objection! But what about the photographic print? It only shows three books. Quite right, only three can be seen. That print. That print? You, you mean to say... <laughs> Allow me to present another. One that shows the victim's hand. I, I don't believe it. Wait, the lion's pride? It's... it's the fourth book. You will observe... as you will observe... This fourth book was hidden from view in the original and printed the vi by the victim's torso. No. No! Order! Order! There! You see? You see? Look at that! Look, look, look! Yes. It's just like I said. Isn't it my darling? But wait. He, his receipt is only for three books, though. So what happened to the fourth? So where'd the fourth one go? Yes, sir. But this is all right. Sorry, sir. I just studied the receipt from the books. Purchased by the accused on the day in question. Let's just beat the titles once again, if you please. Oh yes, of course. The picture of Monsieur somebody or other. The picture of Monsieur Le Coq. What's it, yearnings? Canterbury yearnings. A meal for someone. A meal for Gaboriel, in fact. The, as the court has just heard, the witness remembers the book. All the book titles flawlessly, save for a few minor details. Mrs. B's power of recollection can only be described as exceptional. Did you hear that? Really? The, the gentleman paid me a compliment. Yes, sir. Flawless, sir. Patricia is flawless. But, but there, there are only three books on the receipt, and Miss B mentioned four. There's nothing surprising about that. The fourth book is that which is shown in this photographic print. I'm sorry, Council, but that doesn't. But does that not seem odd? Why should the fourth book be omitted from the receipt? It's not odd at all, my lord. As the photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, it belongs to the victim. The victim was holding her own book? I wonder, what became of that fourth book? Obviously, it wasn't overlooked by the investigating officers at Scotland Yard. I have it here as evidence. You will submit that and the aforementioned photographic print to the court, please, counsel. My pleasure, my lord. Second crime scene photograph entered into the record. The fourth book has been entered into the record. The 
prosecution rests. Well, the defense... Can't find anything out of place. I knew it! Oh, look at this! This book has been badly burnt! You're right! You'd never be able to read it in this state, especially not the light under pages. What a terrible waste! Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm. Book recently damaged by fire. Doesn't seem to raise a red flag with me. I knew it. I knew this was the this was the book. seem surprised, my learned friend. But your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes, but futile. The spurious longer route into the accused's lodgings that you tried to establish in your summation examination and the attempted at discrediting of witnesses' powers of recollection in your cross-examination. Futile? You walked right into the stint. Do you see? Everything we've said is true. Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, Pat! Marry me, Pat! So, perhaps the ladies and gentlemen of the jury would like to reconsider their positions? Should the court waste any more time on this Nippenese travesty? Or is the decision you had to make all too apparent already? and see all of the evidence. This trial has run its course. Mr. Arrodo, I'm afraid we're in a terribly precarious position. I know, but if I fight back in the wrong way now, I can very well make, just make matters worse. So what do you think? What do you do now? Objection! I'm not done yet. So, that last cross examination was your final chance to establish criminal defense, and you failed. The die has been cast. There is no more room for debate. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but. I can't think of what to say. That book has a critical flaw. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks, it seems somewhat forced to close down the debate at this point. Significant little eastern isle must be a lawless hole indeed. For the only judicial assistant of the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. Oh! I, I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. You, so you'll have to forgive me, but I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Norholdo! Norholdo! One of this land's great writing principles is tolerance. Aside from, apparently, the entire jury. So the court will hear from you, Matt. Go ahead, Mr. Sato. Go ahead, Mr. Sato, please. Very well. Pray, what insight can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see fit to pursue further? Well, the court's been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross-examination finished. I see. Do you believe that this new evidence wants further examination, do you? Um, Mr. Naruto, what do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the decision proof we've been waiting for. The judge is sure to ask members of the jury to announce their learning leanings in a moment. And of course, he's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial piece of evidence is and why. So we must take this opportunity to examine the newly presented evidence as thoroughly as possible. Yes, I understand. And thank you, Mr. Sato. This is it. Susato Sato's managed to win us one last chance here. I can't let it go to waste. 
The defense was just resident evidence, my lord. <gasps> Very well. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers profound insight on this case that is, and has hitherto been overlooked. The book, right? The back cover is badly burnt. Take that! The evidence is question is what we can see from the newly presented photographic print on the crime scene. The fourth book found in the victim's hand. Objection! We have already discussed the fourth book at length. Other than it being in the victim's grasp at the time of the incident, no, insi no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further, we have very flagrant waste of the court's time, as you well know. Ark! Hmm. Yes, I'm afraid, Counsel, I must concur with the prosecution on this matter. When I afforded you this opportunity, you led the court to believe the evidence in question contained a hitherto undiscovered clue. It does! Um, so I must ensue elaborate, Counsel. You will identify this clue at once. Do I make myself clear? Oh, um, yes. Yes, my lord. It's, um... Mr. Arnoldo, I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of evidence, which means you may very well be on the right track. Yes, you think you may be right. Okay, I got really worried that I presented the wrong thing and it was just going to game over me instantly. For, uh, Mr. Naruto, you will show us uh, precisely where is the vital clue to this case, which is what this fourth book conceals. Uh, present is R. Got it! I'd like to ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. The back? What do you... Good gracious! It's been burnt to a crisp! So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It is undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. Objection! Unnaturally, you say? And what of it, my Japanese friend? Oh? Were I to concede the point if it bears no relation to the... Were I to concede the point if it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. Should you wish to do so that this fire damage is some of the old clue as to what happened that day? Pray do enlighten us. What truth does this charred book hide? Charred book? There's just one possibility here, which I can't quite bring myself to rule out. It's an outside chance, certainly, but worth a try. Alright, I'll explain my theory. Don't keep us waiting any longer, then, Counsel. Explain this theory. What are you, who are you, are you suggesting to ascertain what... It's on My lord, the burn on the back of this book reveals a startling truth. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon. But we already know who the book belongs to. If it does we get in our hand, and she fell to the floor after all, it's obviously hers. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hand is yet to be answered. However, as to the questions of who the book really belongs to and where it originated, the defense has a very has very credible answers. Good gracious, how can you possibly? Very well, I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise, but do remember, the members of this jury may well burn. You if your little gamble goes awry. Counsel, the defense's response here is very likely to influence the final outcome of this trial. So tell me, who do you claim is the owner of this book? The owner is John Garandy. John here. Take that! The answer is that that book belongs to the couple who own the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb. The landlords? And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I don't know, but... 
of all the people in London, one of the sits chosen for jury duty in this courtroom today is none other than Mrs. Garadeb herself. Oh my goodness me! I, I think you must be mistaken, sir. I, I, I'm not Mr. Garadeb's wife. I'm not his maid. This would be so much easier if you would just drop the, pre the pretense. Alright then, how about a simple question for you? Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Garadeb's house? I, I would never presume to know all the books he keeps, so- OBJECTION! This is outlandish behavior. This woman is the accused's landlady. You say? Go and placate this hard-working member of the public. Use of his smircher without a shred of evidence. Your actions are on fire. OBJECTION! This is an American gesture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, at almost exactly the same time as the victim was stabbed on the pavement below, another incident was taking place in the room on the top floor of Mr. Mir Mrs. Garadeb's house. Good lord, what sort of incident, counsel? A fire alarm. <laughs> To say it was, for it to say it was. I didn't the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke. Couldn't see a bloody thing. It didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The bloody furniture started going up as well. The worst of it is I lost my favorite book. A great book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride. By Joe, that's the very same title that's the subject of this debate. Oh dear me! Objection! This is risable. All you've told the court is that a book by the same name was involved in the fire. In a fire. But in which case it's reasonable to assume that it was burnt to ashes. And entirely, un and entirely unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of a crime. Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the cause of the fire was marital discord. Without going into details, it appears that Mrs. Garadeb was considerably enraged. And at least she continued to attack Mr. Garadeb even amid the flames. Oh, how awful! I can't even imagine being so hard to the one you know. Can you really? Absolutely not, sir. My Patricia will never raise a finger against me, sir. One of my favorite novels. One of my favorite novels in that case. This was a fire girl. Oh, that was that. It whoosh up in smoke. Then the wife started. Then the wife started hurling things at me. There I was back up against the window under heavy enemy fire. Uh, <laughs> Incendiary books coming in ten to the dozen. The man had his back against the window and had burning books thrown at him? Goodness gracious, are, are you suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and landed coincidentally at the scene of a crime? <laughs> no, a thorough investigation of this hunting area was a but in the very evening of the incident, there's no report of the anger and its window pane being broken. That's quite true. We also saw no other sign of broken glass when we visited the Garadev household. Was it not conceivable that the window was open at the time? Not even remotely. Let's not forget the season and the chilly weather that accompanies it. Or would ever leave a window open in the middle of winter. Ah! <coughs> hmm. Does the defense postulate this scenario in all seriousness, counsel? I was the claim that the book found at the scene of the crime was a flame projectile being thrown by Mr. Garadem's wife. I believe it's a possibility, my lord. Call it. Well, I hope that everyone can see what you are now, you little foreign trickster. 
You call yourself a lawyer, but you're just a coward. A mean coward. Really? Claiming that our little test set off the whole neighborhood all... Uh, oh, set the whole neighborhood all right. Honestly, I'm that I'm merely posing as a maid for appearance's sake. How come to you? It's nothing to do with this beastly case. Not any of it. All you've done is sully our family's name. No, I, I assure you, that was never my intention. Talking an outstanding citizen's name through the mud simply to divert attention from your failing defense. I should box your ears, that's what I should do. It's utterly unforgivable. Too right. Here we go. I wonder who sat here now listen to this nippany spouting about his fancy foreign theories. But think about it. At the end of the day, only one person. The only person who could have possibly stabbed the victim is that little hunchback with a mustache. He ran away from the scene, too. I, I do declare you're right. It's true. Yes, what did I tell you? Make sense to me. <laughs> Sorry, what's up? Well? It would appear that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury are once again in full agreement. What is your position, Lord Von Zeke's? In truth, my lord, I feel these have been unnecessary protracted proceedings. But then one must always exercise patience in order to savor the best vintage. No, wait! The, the mystery of the fourth book still hasn't been. It boots are your predilection, my learned friend. Studied them on your own time. No forgive the discourtesy this time? <clears throat> In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now state your individual decisions regarding the defendant's culpability Guilty. for the here. Guilty! 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 Do I have to sway Guilty. them again? Guilty! Yep, this is another... This is another forced one. Ambiguous response. That's twice now. It's over. Mr. Norodo, don't give up. Mr. Sasha, have you forgotten? The battle isn't over yet. You're, you're not suggesting. Of course, the defense has the right to another summation examination at this point. You can still convince the jurors to change their mind. You have one more chance. Why is that always down to the wire with these? Why can't I ever get an easy. Well, because that wouldn't be the game, obviously, but still. My lord, the defense has to exercise its right to summation examination. Hm. You believe you still have a tricks up your sleeve? You don't intend to trick anybody. I intend to uncover the truth. This is no time to be downcast. As long as there's a chance, I have to stay strong and determined. <laughs> to be continued. Uh, okay, look, I'm gonna be honest, it's been five and a half hours. I didn't even plan on this going past Wednesday, but it's gonna have to, because I am... I don't have another two to three hours in me. So, YouTube, um, I will see you all later. Um, I may... Okay, here's what I'll do. This will be on the Tuesday and Wednesday slot because the, there's really only, like, I, don't, I really only have, like, three and a half to four hours in my Tuesday and Wednesday, or my non-Tuesday and Wednesday slots. So I'll do this on, pro so we'll probably rejoin the, stream-wise, we'll redo the, we'll continue with this probably next Tuesday. I hate to do so because it's going to be super far back. Um... Because that's a very, very big distance. Or actually, no, 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 no. What am I saying? It's 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 3 a.m. on Wednesday. So we'll continue this tomorrow, uh, stream-wise. And then we'll probably finish this episode. And then on 
next Tuesday and Wednesday we'll do the last two episodes, and we'll do Golden Sun in the meantime. Uh, that way we have this whole episode wrapped up nicely and can just... And when we go into episode 5, we don't have to worry about anything left over from um, episode 4, where, oh, we have, like, one bit of last bit of trial left to do. Alright. So that's gonna do it for stream tonight, as well as the YouTube video. So, I'm going to save really quickly. Yeah, we're on trial part two. I imagine the that the last trial is gonna be like investigation and then three trial parts. Um But anyway, that's all for stream as well as for this episode. So good night. I'll see you all stream wise tomorrow and next part on YouTube will also go up probably the day after this yeah definitely the day after this all right good night